Hey, Andrew Chalman here with ADSR Sounds. In this week's tutorial, I'll be working on the Machine Studio hardware, but I'll be talking about some more general music production tips, uh, specifically working with the drums to create a wide stereo image. Um, so let's go ahead and get right into this tutorial. Um, I'll start with a project that I've been working on. It's a pretty recent one, the really cool sample, and I like how it turned out. So um, it sounds like this. <laughs> So that is what we will be working towards, and I'll be working on the drum group. Um, here is the finished one that I used, but I went ahead and created a duplicate copy over here, and I'm going to build this back up to show you how I created these drum sounds, and in specific, uh, talking about um, creating that nice wide stereo image to, uh, to get that sort of vibe to it. So I'm going to go ahead and mute, let's see, I'll mute everything else except this drum group here. And I will create, let's see, we're on this pattern here. Um, I will unmute that. Okay, we're all good to go. Let's see here. I'm going to start with the kick drum. So here is the kick drum. It's just a pretty basic kick drum. These samples are from Bitowski's uh, Boom Bap Essentials. Um, but the kick drum is a center point of low frequency. And as a general rule of thumb, I want to keep this right in the center of the stereo spectrum. I don't want to pan left or right. Um, so this kick drum is just right in the middle and uh, nothing is done with this kick drum here. I will keep it right in the middle of the spectrum. So uh, so that's the kick drum there. And now the next thing I'll bring in here is a snare. And um, when I do my snares, uh, when I record my snares, I pretty often layer these snare samples. So I'll, I'll choose one sound, and then I'll choose another snare sound, and then sort of layer those in. Maybe you have to do some, some effects, some EQing to get them to sit together. Um, but I'll almost always layer in a snare. So here's the first sound I used. There was one snare sound, then I also went ahead and created um, this additional layer on top. So if I mute this one, there's that other sound, and together they sound like this. Now these two aren't just layered right on top of each other. I did a couple of things here, but the, the one that I want to talk about here is just using some simple panning to get these to create a wider sound. Um, so on the studio hardware, you just go into the mixer mode up here, and we can see I have uh, let's enter into this kit here. I have my snare one and snare two. So this one over here, if I go into the pan menu, is a little bit to the left, and this one is a little bit to the right. So if I undo that, it would sound a little bit more focused in the middle. Um, by, by pulling these out a little bit, I'll maybe increase it even more. I get a wider snare sound, as well as the sonic characteristics of those two samples. And so that is trick number one to get this nice stereo image, is to layer your snare and put those different layers on different areas of the spectrum. Um, so after the snare, I went ahead and added a, uh, a series of hi-hats. And so if I unmute these that are right here, and I did a similar trick with these, I have three different hi-hat sounds, and all of these are panned a little bit differently. So here's one to the left, to the right, and a little bit less to the right here, almost in the middle. And by alternating these playing, you sort of get this back and forth sound in your headphones or your speakers, wherever you're listening. So it just makes it a little bit more interesting than having them play right down the middle of the spectrum. Um, so things at this point sounded just like this. I had a few other sounds that I wanted to incorporate. Um, let's see though, let's move on to Let's put this one in here. This is this sort of like wood block. I don't really know how to describe this, um, but it's labeled as a wood block sound. So I added this in, just playing uh, straight notes here. But the cool thing I did with this was add a effect on top in the form of some chorus. Um, so by turning this chorus on, here, let's just solo this. Here's it without the chorus. And there it is with the chorus. So you have to get these settings uh, dialed in as you want them, but here's the ones I use for this specific effect. And you can just hear how that sort of brings out this wood block effect and brings it out towards the edges of that stereo spectrum and some additional, some additional wideness to the sound. So here is what it sounded like so far. I don't think I had these in yet. So it sounded like this. And I also added in some tambourine cool sounds like this. This is another 
Um, another layering trick, pretty much the same as the snare. Um, I, I took two pads and layered them together. Um, if, you, if you're not familiar with how to do this, actually, I, I didn't talk about it in the snares, but really quickly, all you have to do is go into pad mode and put the two pads in the same link group. Um, so these two are in, in group number one, um, and my snares are in group number two, so they will be linked together. And then I went ahead, went into the mixer. You can see here's one to the left, and here's one to the right. Um, so additional tactics there just by putting those out towards the edges of the spectrum and we get that nice wide tambourine sound. And I added that in, it sounded like this. And let's see, what else did I do here? Um, I took a sort of like a Congo drum. This was part of that, of the original kit. I just added this in on a few of the snare hits. This could actually be brought down a little bit in volume, and I'm pretty sure it's just right. Yeah, it's just right in the middle. Um, this doesn't contribute to the wideness of it, but it, it adds some some sonic character to a few of those snare hits. And then uh, let's see. I think the final thing here is my crash cymbal, and um, I have a. I used to have quite a bit of trouble getting crash cymbals to sit in really nicely in the mix, um, but I've I've come across. I'll let that fade out. I've I've come across a technique that I almost use for all of my tracks, that I use for almost all of my tracks, I should say. Um, so this crash cymbal has, I'm gonna uh, bypass these effects first. The first effect I add is some reverb. This is a plate reverb, so there it is without it. And then I add this in, it's quite a lot of reverb here. So that just sort of adds some air to that crash cymbal. But the really cool one here is the beat delay. So if I turn this on, I have this set to maximum stereo and I have the split and crossover up pretty high. Um, so that's going to make these, these reverb and delay tails pan back and forth between the left and the right. So you can hear as that delay sort of fades out, it alternates between the far left and far right of the stereo spectrum. And that really lets that crash cymbal sit in the mix nicely and really makes it sound super huge. Um, so with all of those components added together, the drums sounded like this. Now there were some final effects I added on the group level. And these were, let's see, first a little bit of reverb. And when you're adding reverb on your drum bus, for me personally, I always make sure to take the lows all the way out. And that's just gonna make sure that the super low frequencies part of the kick drum are not going to become too muddy. So I took the lows all the way out and the mix is pretty much almost all the way down, just some subtle reverb. Let's see if we can hear the difference this adds. So there's some reverb, and then I also added a wave stereo imager. And I usually like to keep all of my tutorials with machine effects because uh, most of you might not have the same plugins as I do. Um, but this is a, a really helpful effect that I have found. I got a really good deal on the wave silver bundle a while ago, and I used this stereo imager quite a bit. Um, all I did here, I'll, I'll bring this down and I'll show you what it sounds like as I bring the width up. So to be honest with you, I don't really know what this is doing to get that sound. I need to read up and actually learn how this plugin works. Um, but I do know that adding this in a little bit, that the default setting is, is a half 0.5. So I just bring this up a little bit, and that just further separates what's in the side of the spectrum. It seems to further push that out towards the edges and just adds a little bit more width to the overall drums. Um, so that is everything I did for the drums um, between the, the sample choices and the layering and the effects of the individual sounds, and also wrapping it up with the effects on the group level. Um, all those combined to give what I think is a really nice drum sound that really fits in with this project. Uh, so I'm gonna mute this and unmute the original one and just play it back once more so you can hear, so you can hear how it sounds in context. And um, with that, I will finish up this tutorial and say, as always, thanks for watching and let me know if you have any questions relating to this tutorial. So uh, here is the project. Thank you.